Have you ever wondered why YouTubers use the test benches they do? Have you ever wondered why they're built on a system that most people will never own? Have you ever wanted to see test bench results from something close to what you may actually own? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about why they do what they do and discuss why I'm building my new test bench my way. What's up guys, my name is Juan and you're watching my channel, Blueprint PC. It's finally time for me to retire my current average gamer's test bench and I wanted to take you guys along for the ride for two main reasons. The first reason is simply I want to explain why I chose the parts that I chose so you guys understand that better. And the second part of that is simply so I have something to refer back to so in a later video when somebody comments and say, hey, why the hell did you do that? Well, here's a video to find out why. But real quick, the reason why other YouTubers do a super high-end system is they want to minimize, not remove, just reduce the bottlenecks that may be in the system. You know, whether that becomes the CPU, RAM, even the hard drives now, whatever that may be, they do that to reduce the possibility of any kind of bottleneck to where hopefully in the intent is that the GPU will then become the bottleneck at that point in time. Now, this is perfectly fine. And I honestly think it's a good thing that there are people out there that do that. And I do encourage you to watch as many of those videos as you can handle in conjunction with mine, because this will give you the full spectrum of what you should expect from a given GPU. So that way you know, hey, if I have the full balls to the wall system, this is where I'm gonna land. And if I maybe don't have that, I have what I can actually afford for you know most people, you're probably gonna fall somewhere in this like, you know, super low end to kind of middle ground budget realm. You're gonna get a good idea of, hey, this is where I'm actually gonna see performance at versus, you know, some hopes and dreams. And that's pretty much the main reason why I do it is because most gamers can't afford this top tier, like five to 10% of the best of the best hardware. Most people are gonna be in this, you know, lower end spectrum. So it's gonna give you a good result of what you should actually real world expect to see when you get these components home in your own rig. For example, so when you have like a mid-range GPU, like a 3060 Ti, 3070, or 4070 Ti now, that's considered mid-range, and you plan to pair it with an i5 or an R5 from AMD and not have a 13900K or 7950X3D, you know, so that way when you get that component home, you're gonna have real world numbers to base your, up, your purchase on. And then you probably ask, well, what if I actually have that super high-end rig? Well, then here's the other benefit the way I do it. If you do have better specs than what my new current test bench is gonna be, then guess what? If you like what you see in my you know, test benches, then you should be happier because when you get the product home, you should see the same at least, or most likely better results. I don't use SAM or rebar or any other performance boosters unless specified otherwise in specific videos. That way, again, you're seeing the raw horsepower or whatever the card or component can do. And then again, when you get it home, you could potentially boost more performance out of it. Again, another benefit to leave some extra meat on the bone for you guys. Now, I know some people don't agree with this approach and that's perfectly fine. Again, that's why I do recommend watching other YouTubers. But here's the thing. I'm gonna be that friend that tells you the truth versus the one that blows smoke in your, you know, your special region where the internet trolls hide all their sticks. And yes, I know seeing all those crazy high FPS numbers is great and gives you the downstairs feels, but realistically though, it's, it's if you don't have the specs, you're never gonna see that. So let's go ahead and let's see what I'm actually putting together. Real quick guys, just for full transparency, I've actually completed the build already. I had to re-record this portion of the video because um, it didn't come out well when I went to editing it, the footage was screwed. So we're gonna walk back through it. So when you do see some of the build montage and I'm wearing different clothes, that's why. So first up, we're gonna talk about the processor. It's the <laughs> Ryzen 7 5700X. Eight cores, 16 threads. I'll put some extra specs up here, but long story short, I think it's a good middle ground. It's PCIe Gen 4 for all those people who kept, you know, getting, you know, butthurt about the 5600G being PCIe Gen 3. But regardless, it's going to be a good solid processor moving forward. And I think honestly right now it's the best bang for the buck out there unless you can find a steal for the 5800X 3D. Because right now these are averaging for like 190, 200 bucks in the US, which for eight cores and the performance you get out of it, that's pretty damn good, in my opinion, at least. This is all getting bolted up to the ROG Strix B550F gaming Wi-Fi. Again, another budget-friendly option. It's a B550 board, not an X570, which again is the more, again, conscious version of a motherboard that you can get. It's a lower tier of the ROG Strix line, but overall, it's a good performer. It has a lot of great features to it. And the Wi-Fi is a nice plus for me. So especially for a test bench, if I have to do something and move it around for any weird reason, it's a nice option and same thing for a lot of other people out there for finding a Wi-Fi board. This is a pretty good layout. It's got good uh, heat sinks on all the, the VRMs and everything like that. So 
Overall, I think it's a solid option. Here's the first fun one, the Ram. Like I said, the system's already built, so you'll get to see it in the montage and on the reveal. But um, long story short, 16 gigabytes, where I was kind of torn on this one because 32 is going to become the standard here going forward, uh, probably within this year. It's probably gonna be what everybody's expecting to be the standard. So I may just add two more sticks at some point in time to justify that. But it's 3600 megahertz. It's 3600 megahertz. 3600 megahertz CL16 memory. Uh, again, Team Force Delta. I actually like the way these look with the RGB and whatnot. Again, you'll see that here uh, coming up. And overall, good bang for the buck. I think the kit was like $57 or something like that. You can also find them on sale a lot of times for like 52 or 53, which is pretty good for 16 gigabytes at 3600. As for storage, I have two things here. I've got the T-Force Carter. It's a 500 gigabyte Gen 4 NVMe. It's respectably fast. Again, it's only 500 gigabytes. That's gonna be my boot drive. So it's gonna have, you know, Windows on it. A few other key programs that I don't need for like game launchers will be on a separate drive, which brings me to this guy, the Patriot P300. This is a Gen 3 NVMe at two terabytes, and this will be my game drive. And the reason why I have these separate is because this guy right here, you know, again, boot drive. When you're doing a lot of uninstall, reinstall, uninstall, reinstall of different drivers, etc., sometimes Windows gets a little corrupted, and then you have to reset or just completely reinstall and reformat, you know, a brand new install of Windows. And it's nice to have a separate boot drive for that, and then your game drive, so you don't have to reinstall two terabytes worth of games to do that. So that's why I do recommend doing that, and that's also why I'm doing that. And that brings me to the sponsor of this video. Enermax has, you know, been a friend of the channel here for some time, probably more than I deserve in all honesty, because they usually provide me with something that takes me forever and a day to get around to actually using it in a video. But they gave me a couple components here which are helping make this build happen. First up is the Revolution DF. It's a fully modular, gold rated power supply, awesome quality, super quiet, and I can't think of enough because this is gonna be good for any GPU that I'm gonna test, technically considering the 4090 is still rated for 850 watts. Um, so we'll find out at some point in time, I might actually plug the 4090 in this and see what happens. And that brings me to the next part provided by Enermax, which is this, the Liquimax 3 in white, which I love because it's going with my build and you'll understand why here, obviously the white RAM you couldn't see there, but these are awesome. It's a 360 millimeter AIO, so three fans, RGB out the yin yang, and they're relatively cheap. A lot of times you can find these for like 100, 110 bucks, sometimes even less when they're on sale. So for a 360 AIO for 100-ish bucks, that's pretty good paying for the buck in my opinion. And honestly, they're really easy to install. They have daisy chain fans for RGB and just the actual fan headers themselves. So another win for these guys. And they kept it really classy where everything's white. It's not like all white and then you get like a random black cable somewhere. Like everything's whited out. And then obviously the black will coincide me all black. One thing you may have saw me shuffle to the back earlier is just a creature comfort thing that I enjoy is just power cable extension. These ones are from Azure Horse. I've used Azure Horse, Cable Mod, um, Formula Mod, a whole bunch of different varieties. I haven't had any issues. If I ever have issues with some, I'll let you guys know. But I got these for two main reasons. One, they're colored, so it kind of goes with the build a little bit. They're just gray and black. They're monochromatic, you know, so it'll kind of just add a little bit of something to the build. But in all honesty, when a test bench is in question here, I like having these extra cable length because when you're plugging in a variety of different GPUs, you know, yeah, you might get lucky in a few, then you get that one random GPU where your cables just aren't long enough or they won't reach around a weird bend or something like that. So these will come in handy, give me a little bit of extra length so that way I can make whatever I need to happen, happen. All right, so the case I went with is the Core P3 from Thermaltake. It's an open air test bench. It does have a front glass panel, which I will not be using. That's actually still in the box, why the box still has some weight to it. This is the Snow Edition, so it's pretty much all white as well too, hence the white RAM, the white cooler, and a variety of other components. Yes, the motherboard's not, I wasn't going all white. I'll probably be running full RGB puke all the time anyway, so it really doesn't matter because, again, uninstalling, reinstalling stuff 10 different times, stuff's gonna get screwy. I'm not gonna try to keep it aesthetically pleasing in that respect, but I think it'll look decent overall. I'm excited about the case. Again, I won't be using the front glass panel and I'll be mounting majority of the GPUs, pending they all let me, vertical mount so you can see any RGBs on the fan, things of that nature, which is another benefit of using this route. And yes, the riser cable that I got separately is a 4.0 riser cable. The ones that come with this is Gen 3. So don't worry about that. 
I've already got separate riser cables of different lengths and everything else, so if I need to make something happen, I got that covered. So let me go ahead and jump into that video montage I told you about where I'll be wearing a different shirt. Alrighty guys, so she's all done. I hope you like the montage. I pieced it together as best as I probably could. I'm sure future me will do it as best as I possibly can considering the hodgepodge of footage. But outside of that guys, uh, real quick side notes. 3060 Ti, those are the fans I was saying in the previous video that I actually really liked. Um, I do see it now, staring at it for a long period of time, how they can become a little overbearing in probably fairly short order. But I think initially they're kind of cool looking. As for the build, overall came out really well. Like I said, the AIO from Enermax, honestly, it's super clean, it's super nice. The fans are great. Um, it's I don't know what you can hear and pick up on this because there's obviously this fan, that fan, the pump and all that, but it's honestly respectably quiet. It, it's nothing that you're gonna notice. Even in an open chassis like this, it's something that I would be perfectly fine gaming right next to me. Um, one thing I will tell you too that I kind of did a, a little hack on was right here, uh, the AIO cable is is white, like I told you. It's all very matching. It's very cohesive. Um, but with a black motherboard, that white cable stuck out like a sore thumb. So I actually took some black fabric and, you know, essentially re-sleeved it very poorly. But that was fixed just to kind of make that blend in a little better and not just stand out like this big white line going across the motherboard. Um, overall, I'm happy with it. I'm excited to start getting back into running some benches to see what some of these cards can do. And I have a whole bunch of new content coming up here uh, following the now that this is complete. I apologize for the delay uh, after the holidays. There was some personal stuff, etc. But yeah, I'm not gonna get into that, guys. Outside of that, do me a favor. Please hit that like subscribe button and I will catch you in the next one.